Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha Television. I'm Rajat Kane and here are the headlines at this hour. RBI gives borrower 30 more days for repayment of housing, car, farm and other loans worth up to Rs 1 crore. Crop loans with sanction limit of Rs 1 crore or less also eligible for benefit. Samajwadi, team, Samajwadi chief Mulayam Singh Yadav announces first list of 325 candidates for UP elections. Rules out pre-poll alliance with any party. Outgoing Arab Air Force Chief Aru Praha feels 36 Rafale warplanes ordered from France are not enough. Says India needs at least 200 more such fighter jets to sharpen military edge. And Russia and Turkey roll out ceasefire plan for all of Syria, agree on expanding ceasefire in Aleppo to enable evacuation of civilians. In a further relief to people hit by demonetization, the Reserve Bank yesterday gave borrower 30 more days over and above the 60 days it had already announced. This will apply to repayment of housing, car, farm and other loans worth up to Rs 1 crore. Borrowers in effect have 90 days breather from getting the account classified under non-performing asset category. The dispensation will apply to reduce payable between November 1st and December 31st, 2016. According to the RBI notification, running working capital accounts or crop loans with a sanction limit of Rs 1 crore or less will be eligible for this benefit. The additional 90 days will also apply to defer classification of an existing standard asset as substandard and not for dealing the migration of an account cross, across subcategories of NPA. Last month, the RBI had provided additional 60 days for repayment of loans worth up to Rs 1 crore. Separately, the Central Bank came out with special dispensation for farm loans earlier this week. With just a day left to deposit all currency in banks, the Union Cabinet on Wednesday passed an ordinance to impose penalty for people holding scrapped 500 and rupee 1000 notes beyond December 30th deadline. The penalty includes a hefty fine or imprisonment. The Union Cabinet on Wednesday cleared the promulgation of an ordinance to penalize people holding scrapped 500 and 1000 rupee notes after the end of the December 30th deadline. The specified banknote cessation of liabilities ordinance will remove liability of the government and the RBI on the demonetized 500 and 1000 rupee notes. The penalty for holding old currency in excess of 10 notes may include financial fines and a jail term of up to four years in certain cases. Only selected RBI branches will accept the old currency post December 30th. Opposition parties have meanwhile questioned the government's policies on the note ban. Ideally, the government should have brought this law in the parliament during the winter session and the law should have been changed. But the government has chosen this backdoor ordinance method. We are opposed to this ordinance, Raj, but the government is increasingly relying on ordinances because the government does not want to be answerable. The cabinet committee chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi also approved a centrally sponsored scheme, namely road connectivity project for left-wing extremism affected areas. The scheme is aimed at improving rural road connectivity in 44 adjoining districts in different states. Ravindra Sharan's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi targeted Prime Minister once again on the issue of demonetization allegations of corruption against him. He was addressing party workers at the 132nd Foundation Day of the Congress Party. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi's list of questions for Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday included how much black money had been recovered since demonetization was announced on November 8th. Prime Minister ने ये 
यज्ञ की है यज्ञ किया है नुकसान गरीब लोगों का हुआ है बलि गरीब लोगों की चढ़ाई गई है किसानों की मजदूरों की छोटे दुकानदारों की युवाओं की इन सब ग्रुप्स को नुकसान हुआ है और इस नुकसान के लिए सरकार को इनको कॉम्पनसेशन देना चाहिए The Congress leader also attacked the government for putting a limit on withdrawal of money from banks saying the government cannot stake a claim on people's hard earned money Jo paisa Narendra Modi ji ne banks mein dalwaya hai wo Hindustan ke logon ka paisa hai wo Hindustan ki sarkar ka paisa nahi hai banks ka paisa nahi hai To jo limit lagai gayi hai 24000 rupaye ki us limit ko ab aap hataiye क्योंकि इस लिमिट से आप हिंदुस्तान की फाइनेंशियल इंडिपेंडेंस छीन रहे हैं हमारे लोगों की फाइनेंशियल इंडिपेंडेंस आप छीन रहे हैं उनकी फाइनेंशियल इंडिपेंडेंस उनको आप वापस दीजिए वाइल एड्रेसिंग द कांग्रेस फाउंडेशन डे इन द मॉर्निंग गांधी हैड सेड दैट द नोट्स बैन इज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ हाउ द मोदी गवर्नमेंट हैज फॉस्टर्ड फियर अमंग पीपल किसान को जबरदस्त चोट लगी है किसान का आप कर्जा माफ कीजिए और 20% एमएसपी पे आप बोनस दीजिए जो उनका अभी पिछले दो महीने में नुकसान हुआ है बीपीएल परिवार की हर महिला को आप पच्चीस हजार रुपए दीजिए उनके बैंक में उनके अकाउंट में आप डालिए हाउ द बीजेपी वॉज क्विक टू रियक्ट से कांग्रेस डज नॉट स्टैंड विद मेरा कहना यह है आप प्रधानमंत्री से सवाल पूछ रहे पांच सवाल पूछ रहे पहले आप जवाब दो ना वॉट इज द एक्सप्लेनेशन बाई यू एंड यूर पार्टी पर्टिकुलर द डे ऑफ यूर फाउंडेशन दट you people have patronized corruption and you have not taken any steps to curb the generation of black money the congress leader has been relentlessly attacking the prime minister and his government on the issue of demonetization of the past few weeks keeping up the pressure in every rally he addresses but the bjp has also been relentless in its counter attacks bureau report rajya sabha tv Samajwadi chief Mulayam Singh Yadav yesterday announced the first list of 325 candidates for the 403 assembly seats in Uttar Pradesh. Ignoring Akhilesh Yadav's objection to tainted candidates, Mulayam said candidates for the rest of seats will be announced soon. 176 of 325 candidates are sitting MLAs. Addressing the media in Lucknow, the SP chief also ruled out any pre-poll alliance with any party. This was a clear snub to Akhilesh Yadav who said he was open to an alliance with the Congress. Mulayam also announced his brother Shivpal Yadav from Jaswant Nagar assembly seat. Akhilesh Yadav's name didn't appear in the first list. Mulayam Singh also ruled out rejecting his son as the chief ministerial candidate. To ek ek bialish ko Rampal ne order ne lekar ke baat ki hai. इतना डेमोक्रेटिक सिस्टम किसी पार्टी में नहीं है कि हर उम्मीदवार से बात की हो ये तो पहली बार कह दिया समाजवादी पार्टी का किसी से गठबंधन नहीं होगा फॉर्मर तमिलनाडु चीफ मिनिस्टर जय ललिताज क्लोज एड Sasikala is likely to be unanimously elected as the general secretary of the AIDMK in the much anticipated general council meeting of the party today While Sasikala herself maintained silence in taking over, AIA DMK party leaders, including Chief Minister O Pani Rasilvam, proposed her as the next General Secretary. According to party sources, the meeting will adopt a resolution condoling the death of Jayalalitha. Later, a unanimous resolution will be adopted, electing Sasikala as the General Secretary. The resolution would then be handed over to Sasikala. The crucial general secretary post is lying vacant since the death of party chief Jayalalitha earlier this month. Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister Tharman Samaguttham would hold talks with Finance Minister Arun Jaitley today. Both sides are expected to work towards modifying the bilateral double taxation avoidance agreement. It will be Tharman's third visit to India this year. the two leaders discussed the, the two leaders will discuss changes to the bilateral tax treaty opening doors for india to tax singapore based equity investors and profit on their investments in india the new agreement will be on the lines of bilateral treaties with cyprus and mauritius 
Parman's two days visit follows Singapore Prime Minister Lee Zin Lung's meeting with Prime Minister Modi on in October. Now it's time to take a short break. Like two persons, they cannot have same fingerprints. Similarly, no two woods in the world can have the same structure. Our slogan is use more, grow more, because there is no material which can replace that wood. Latest work which the institute has done is wood polymer composites. And our purpose is to replace that plastic or reduce the use of plastic. Watch Eureka with Dr. S. K. Sharma. Senior Scientist at Institute of Food Science and Technology on Rajya Sabha Television. Homi J. Bhabha, multifaceted personality, scientist, visionary, chief architect of India's nuclear program. The founder of two of India's greatest research institutions, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research and Baba Atomic Research Center. Baba unraveled the electron positron scattering process of quantum electrodynamics. It's called Baba scattering after him. Art arisen from a multi-hued cultural canvas. Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. And encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. Suresh Kalmari on Wednesday declined to take over Indian Olympic Association Life Presidency. This comes a day after Sports Ministry issued a show cause news notice to the IOA stating that all ties will be cut with the National Olympic body until Kalmadi and Abhay Singh Chautala were removed from the positions. Earlier, both Kalmadi and Chautala were unanimously selected as the IOA Life Presidents by 150 members disregarding corruption cases against them. A day after he was named lifetime president of the Indian Olympic Association along with Abhay Singh Chautala, Suresh Kalmari on Wednesday declined the position. This was after the sports ministry issued a show cause notice to IOA, saying all ties with the association will remain cut off till Kalmari and Abhay Singh Chautala are removed. On Tuesday, sports minister Vijay Goel had lashed out at the decision calling it totally unacceptable. The post that was offered to him by IOA, he has voluntarily taken a decision not to accept any post till his name is cleared uh, by the court. Unko shokas notice bhej rahe hain, jiska jawab wo denge. Jab tak in dono logon ko Suresh Kalmari aur Abhay Chautala ko nikala nahi jata, ya ye jab tak tyag patr nahi dete. तब तक आईओ के साथ हम किसी प्रकार की डीलिंग नहीं करेंगे। The IOA claimed that the posts were honorary and that no executive authority will be given to them. It stated that it had taken a constitutionally legitimate decision. It's a honorary post in which you know they have no role to play. See the how the decisions are taken in the IOA. See the who are the members of the IOA. The members are. The elected representative in the sports federations, number one, three, three vote hote unke. and the state Olympic committee chairman and the general secretary. They cannot go against their national, uh, against their national federation. Pehle 
पहले ये बात सोचनी चाहिए पहले यह बात कहनी चाहिए कि मैं किसके ऊपर इलीगेशन लगा रहा हूं उन्होंने कैसे ये बात कह दी कि मेरे खिलाफ जो है कोई ना कोई क्रिमिनल चार्जेज है मैं लीगल अपने वकीलों से इसके लिए ओपिनियन ले रहा हूं और मैं सोई फीसदी विजय गोयल साहब को इसके लिए नोटिस दूंगा The IOA named Kalmadi and Chautala as life presidents at its annual general meeting in Chennai on Tuesday. The decision sparked instant anger as both have faced serious corruption charges in the past. Many sections instantly demanded a rollback of the decision. It's not surprising for me because I've been watching these people in sports arena, in federations, IOA for last 35 years and nothing has changed corruption wise the way they handle the athletes like slaves. so whatever has happened kalmadi and chotala all these people are, are supported by all uh, ioa all the federations and they are made life presidents i'm not surprised kalmadi served as ioa president from 1996 to 2011 and was jailed for 10 months for his involvement in the 2010 delhi commonwealth games corruption scandal but was later released on bail chotala on the other hand served as the president of the ioa from december 2012 to february 2014 when the sports body was suspended by the parent international olympic committee for fielding chart sheeted candidates at the elections his election as ioa chief was annulled by the ioc bureau report rajya sabha tv outgoing air force chief arup raha feels that 36 rafale war planes sorted from france are not enough according to him india needs at least 200 more such fighter jets to sharpen it, its military edge Addressing media persons in New Delhi ahead of his retirement on Saturday, Air Chief Marshal Raha disclosed that IAF's Russian origin Illusion 78 tanker fleet is plagued by maintenance problems. He said more mid-air refuelers were a strategic requirement to extend the range of fighter planes. Raha said that India could meet the target of having 250 fighter fighter jets if the foreign companies set up shops in India under the Make in India project. Replying to a question on former IAF chief S.P. Tyagi's role in the VVIP chopper scam, Raha said that multiple agencies are involved in procurement process and no one could pin the blame on one particular organization. We have just signed for 36 aircraft. We require more aircraft in this middleweight category, four plus generation, to give us the entire spectrum capability in terms of. fighter aircraft capability so inventory management is one we definitely would like to have more of this type of aircraft if we can get more of these under the make in india concept or the initiative with lot of transfer of technology if the charge is approved then we have uh, no no sympathy for anyone whatever charge is approved whatever convictions are there We'll abide by that. Former Home Secretary Anil Bajpayee is set to become New Delhi's Lieutenant Governor, a post which fell vacant after the sudden resignation of Nazib Jung last week. President Pranab Mukherjee has accepted the appointment papers of Bajpayee and has also accepted Nazib Jung's resignation. Anil Bajpayee is a 69 batch IAS officer and has done many administrative hacks. He retired from services in 2006 as Secretary. urban development ministry bachel was actively associated with the designing and roll out of rupees 60000 crore jawaharlal nehru national urban renewal mission launched by manmohan singh government the former bureaucrat has also been vice chairman of delhi development authority or dda and headed key public sector companies like prasar bharti and indian airlines Viral Acharya was appointed as the deputy governor of the RBI. Acharya comes from an academic background. Before joining the RBI, he was serving as CV star professor of economics in the Department of Finance at New York University. Media reports said he has a research interest in regulation of banks, corporate finance, credit risk and asset pricing. Acharya is also recipient of numerous awards, the latest being the Rising Star in Finance Awards. the appointment committee of the cabinet cleared his appointment for 3 years
Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari on Wednesday called for exploring alternative strategies for regional cooperation with focus on human security, movement of people and trade without unreasonable restrictions. Stating that his SARC experience has not been encouraging, Vice President Ansari called for alternate strategies. He said new structure will have to be voluntary and devoid of overt or covert coercion. Addressing a gathering at after releasing a book authored by former journalist Sudhindra Kulkarni, the Vice President said a beginning has to be made in regional cooperation with a focus on human security problems, on movement of people and on trade without unreasonable restrictions. The practical approach to my mind would be to make haste slowly, to be accommodative rather than exclusionary, so that negative perceptions are allowed to fade away. Political commitments and modalities have to surface to resolve outstanding areas of disagreement. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has defended the Obama administration's decision to allow the U.N. Security Council to declare Israeli settlements illegal. Warning Israel that its future as a democracy is at stake, Kerry said Israel will never have true peace with the Arab world if it doesn't reach out on accord based on Israelis and Palestinians living in their own states. Kerry called for assistance to help Palestinian refugees and urged both the countries to follow to fully recognize each other. Israel, however, accused the United States Secretary of State for showing bias against the Jewish state. Despite our best efforts over the years, the two-state solution is now in serious jeopardy. The truth is that trends on the ground Violence, <clears throat> terrorism, incitement, settlement expansion, and the seemingly endless occupation. They are combining to destroy hopes for peace on both sides and increasingly cementing an irreversible one-state reality that most people do not actually want. Now I must express my deep disappointment with the speech today of John Kerry a speech that was almost as unbalanced as the anti-Israel resolution passed at the UN last week. Israelis do not need to be lectured about the importance of peace by foreign leaders. Israel's hand has been extended in peace to its neighbors from day one, from its very first day. Turkey and Russia agreed on ceasefire plan for all of Syria that came into force last night. The plan aims to expand a ceasefire in the city of Aleppo, brokered by Russia and Turkey earlier this month to enable the evacuation of civilians. If successful, the plan will form the basis of upcoming political negotiation with the opposition overseen by Russia and Turkey in the Kazakh capital, Astana. Ankara and Moscow have been on the opposing sides in the Syrian civil war, but the two countries have started in the last few months to cooperate more tightly on Syria. They've also been able to strike a deal to normalize ties strained by Turkey's shooting down of a Russian warplane last year. The Saudi-backed opposition group said it knew nothing of negotiations but supported a ceasefire. Time for some sporting action in sports beat. Former world number one and 2008 French Open champion Anna Ivanovic retired from tennis at the age of 29. The Serb has been out, out, out with injuries since August and dropped to 63 in the world ranking, having won just 15 matches in 2016. Ivanovic spent 12 weeks as world number one in 2008 and won 15 career single titles. She reached the French Open semi-final in 2015 and was runner-up at Roland Garros and Wimbledon in 2007 and 2008 Australian Open. Russian officials for the first time admitted to mass doping in the country's sport, sport system. According to the New York Times, the Russian officials said it was an institutional conspiracy while denying it was a state-sponsored program. Russian sport officials had 
previously denied the existence of any doping operations even as the International Olympic Committee opened disciplinary proceedings against several Russian athletes. It's in Delhi Ali. Delhi Ali scored twice as Tottenham maintained their challenge for Champions League spot with victory over 10-man Southampton. Saints took the lead in the second minute when defender Virgil van Dirk converted James Ward Prowse free kick. Harry Kane also ended his run of three league games without a goal as he headed in from Christian Eriksen's corner in 52nd minute. That's it in all the bulletin today. Thank you for watching Rajasapa TV.